Well, we're beginning that uh, transition to fall here. This was a look about a year ago. I decided to kind of give the uh, drone a bit of a, a break. We'll get back to that on Tuesday, but uh, a year ago, it looked uh, kind of warm and you can see the fields were pretty dusty. Much different pattern right now as Texas is definitely wet as we go into October 2018 here. So let's uh, head into the map and we're gonna start taking a look at the patterns a little bit differently. And uh, this is something that's a little bit new. I've done kind of a topographic overlay here. And we're going to, each uh, installment of Forecast Lab, we're going to talk about the layout of the synoptic scale systems. For example, what we see on this graphic here, this evening the U.S. is dominated by high pressure up there in Quebec. And it covers much of eastern Canada. And in fact, a lot of that anticyclonic coverage is all the way down into the northern U.S. And even probably as far as Oklahoma and Arkansas. So when we have a pattern like this, most of the mass in the atmosphere is in the northern latitudes right in this area here. This is all relatively high pressure, whereas we have low pressure down to the south. And what that means is there's going to be a tendency for the air to move southward. So this is kind of a cool pattern that we see here. The exception is where we have southerly flow right here in Texas and Louisiana. So that's bringing up a little bit of a surge of warm, moist air. And where it crosses the warm front that you see right here, we get overrunning in that region there. So that tends to be very cloudy and lots of convective activity. And even further up along the front, up in this area here in the higher terrain, we can have upslope flow. And there could even be thunderstorms in that area close to the front. Also, we see a Pacific system right here in the Four Corners area moving out of the southwestern U.S. So in its wake, cold air spreading in from the Great Basin area, Oregon and Washington, and that's starting to push into western New Mexico there. And out ahead of it, we've probably got a active dry line pattern. This is a good setup here for the dry line to be active. And let me bring this down this way. And that's because we've got the tropical air flowing north like that. And out in the deserts, we've got a little bit of a southwesterly pattern as air flows up towards that low pressure in Colorado. So that convergence in this area is a good setup for dry line activity. So let's look at the maps and uh, see what's going on there. We do have a dry line, but it's uh, pretty far west. I would probably put that around Carlsbad and Roswell, right in that area there. But at uh, Guadalupe Peak, you can see those southwest winds. 30 knots sustained there, that might be 40, and much lower dew points back there in El Paso, 41 degrees with, 41 degree dew point with southwest winds there. So looking a little bit more spring-like, and I'll probably go with maybe that for a dry line position there. So that gives a couple of possible play areas if you're chasing severe weather. One would be along the dry line, and the other would be close to the warm front. And if there's any other boundaries out in the uh, warm air mass, that could also be a focus for activity. Another uh, possible area you might look for is where the richer moisture intersects the fronts. 
So out here you can see the dew points are around uh, 63, 62, 62. You get out towards Oklahoma City and Paul's Valley, Ardmore, it's up to 73. So let's see, 73 out around Muskogee, and then it drops off as you get further up to the north. Let me get that centered there. So yeah, the moisture is a little bit weaker there. So we would put the uh, deepest moisture, the moisture axis, kind of in this area right there. And you can see it intersects the front right there. So that would be a favorite area for severe weather. So there's that. There's the uh, dry line further out to the west. And then there's the moist axis and front intersection. So that's a third area that you could possibly watch there. And it does look like there's maybe a little hint of maybe a mesolo in this area. That's probably maybe an artifact from this outflow up in western Oklahoma. But if I'm seeing the winds kind of converging in this area, that might be a sign that maybe there's a mesolo forming along the warm front. All right, so that's kind of a look at uh, what's going on this afternoon. We've got some things to look at. Let's uh, head into the vorticity and uh, thickness charts. Let's go straight into that. Let me bring that up here. Okay, I'm going to go right over to that thickness chart and just kind of segue into that. So there's the current pattern. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, pin down where that front is. That looks like the uh, Canadian front right in that area there. And I think uh, back in here is the Pacific front. Looks like that may just be passing El Paso there and uh, somewhere in between a dry line. Okay, so we can see that the Pacific Front is being driven by some of the Pacific air coming in from the northwest U.S., and then the uh, front in the central U.S. being driven by this Great Lakes High right there. And it looks like a third front coming down from Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba right in that area there. So that's a reinforcing shot of cold air that's on its way south. And that's being driven by this 1035 millibar high. So the pressures involved on all these high pressure regions, not that high, only about 1032, 1035. But uh, we're going to see these highs get stronger as we go into the next week because we are transitioning our weather pattern. And the Hudson Bay vortex looks like that's still active up there in the northern Canadian region. Here's the 500 millibar heights in vorticity. This doesn't exactly intersect the uh, jet stream, but we can kind of infer where that is. And it looks like that runs from the west coast of Canada, straight down south through California, and around into the Four Corners area like that, and then up into Ontario. So the pattern is kind of merid meridian, try again, mer meridional. And that's because we've got that very sharp wavy look, uh, that high amplitude pattern. So we're getting a lot of advection of warm air southward, cold uh, cold air advection southward, warm air northward. There's a lot of interchange of the temperature regimes. So the uh, usual transition after that, we tend to go into a zonal pattern for a while as the gradients start rebuilding. We can still see that uh, cutoff high up there in the Arctic region that was producing some warm weather out in that area. So this we call this a cutoff high because it's displaced north of the jet. Remember the jet is right in this area here. Typically we find high pressure south of the jet. Like here's a good example. That would be the subtropical high there. But in this case we find this lone isolated high up in the Arctic. So that is a cutoff high there. Okay, so let's uh, go into the rest of the charts and uh, look at the tropical systems. This is like uh, week three of Leslie, still wandering around out there in the Atlantic. But we have Tropical Storm Michael coming up to 50 knots there, and we're expecting that to head into the uh, Gulf. And looks like that's taken aim on maybe the Alapich, uh, Apache Cola, is that right? Uh, yeah, okay, so... Anyway, it's uh, west or east of Panama City, and that'll recurve up through southern Georgia up into South Carolina around midweek. 
and it appears that's going to be probably a Cat 1 to Cat 2 hurricane. We're not showing the M's there that are indicative of a uh, strong storm. So we'll check the forecast advisory right there. Maximums, maximum sustained winds, 85 knots. That's going to be on uh, uh, Wednesday there. So not a particularly strong hurricane. Looks like maybe just kind of a Cat 1 storm there. And then we got Sergio still out there. Used to be, a, I think, a Cat 4 storm. But that is going to be recurving soon and heading into Baja, California around Friday. So that'll probably dump a lot of moisture into the uh, Southern Rockies region. Storm Prediction Center showing a lot of uh, convective activity across the central U.S. and we'll just kind of break that down on their page there. Slight risk out uh, looks like that's covering that dry line area right there. And you can see that the marginal risk kind of follows that warm front all the way from northern Missouri down to the Texas Panhandle. However, there's only this severe thunderstorm watch out for the Texas-New Mexico border. And we'll just take a quick look at the storm reports. We did have a, a tornado warning out earlier down uh, southwest of Amarillo, down around the... Uh, I don't remember the name of the towns. Anyway, yeah, one little tornado report down there around the Ardmore area. Let me get some details on that real quick. Yeah, Murray, Oklahoma, that's in the Ardmore area. That was uh, at 2230Z. So it was around 530 this afternoon. And then the others were out around Dimmit, Texas. And that was around uh, 230 this afternoon. Okay, that takes us to the upper level charts. Uh, we've already done a little bit of that, but uh, I'll just go ahead and show you the the uh, hemispheric two, two. Where's the two fifty? Yeah, there's a two fifty chart. So that's showing the high amplitude jet there coming into the western U.S. This was around six to seven in the morning, and you can see that uh, at that time we had what looks like maybe a closed low down around southwestern Utah. So probably by now that will have drifted a little bit to the west there, maybe in the southeast Utah. Picking up a stronger flow out in west Texas, and that's helping to support those storms that we have in that region. Let's see if we can take a look at a SKU-T out around the Midland area, maybe Amarillo too. Now before I do that, I do want to check what kind of environment the soundings are in. We can see that Amarillo appears to be north of the warm front. So we're going to expect to find a little bit of easterly flow in cool conditions, maybe a, a, a frontal inversion, very close to the ground. And then above that, we should start picking up the uh, tropical air surging over the top of that frontal zone. And then uh, Midland, that's pretty much deep in the tropical air. So we should see that uh, carrying a little bit of humidity there, maybe kind of shallow moisture, and then steep lapse rates above that. And then we'll probably take a look at Dodge City, and you can see that they're pretty far back in that cold air, but we'll get an idea of just how thick that cold air is. All right, so let's uh, look at those soundings. All right, we're going to start out with, uh, let's start out with Midland, way down to the south. Okay, this was uh, this morning. And we've got maybe uh, two or 3,000 feet of moisture in the low levels. And that looks like uh, mid to upper 60s dew points. And then that falls off into 50s dew points above that. And looks like the uh, capping inversion is a little bit weak. <clears throat> We're only seeing temperatures at 700 millibars of about 9 Celsius, which is kind of borderline uh, marginal cap. And then above that looks like some pretty good lapse rates. So if we lift a parcel based on, let's do maybe 84. I'm going to go with a temperature of 84 and a dew point of 60. Let's do 65. Okay, we're lifting that parcel there. 
there's the uh, dew point and then the temperature trace is going to go like that and we can see that the air mass is capped there's this little speck of capping right there that's helping to keep things suppressed and then looks like above that some pretty good cape that's probably about 2500 joules per kilogram heading up north to Amarillo Oh, yeah, before I do that, let me just check out the wind flow. I forgot about that. The wind flow is kind of unidirectional. A little bit of uh, curving from 850 all the way up to 600 millibars there. So you might be able to squeak out a little bit of helicity out of that. But the other flip side of that is uh, the winds are about 20 knots down here at the surface and about 15 to 20 aloft. So that's mostly directional shear working on that layer. So that's not very high helicity at all. Okay, going up to uh, Amarillo. Yep, there's that frontal inversion right there. That, remember, this is uh, this morning, so it was probably a little bit deeper back then. And uh, we can see that not only do we have that inversion there, but also the moisture line follows that temperature line. So that's a good indication that that's not a substance inversion. Saturated air above that, and we don't really break out of that saturation until about 10 to 15,000 feet. So that's uh, a lot of cloud material. And yeah, maybe a little bit of an indication of a cap there, but 700 millibar temperatures are only about 6 to 7 Celsius. So that's kind of weak. So most of the uh, inhibition we have in that area in Amarillo is due to the presence of cold air in the lower levels. And then we would expect to find lots of cold air as we go into Dodge City. So this is up in southwest Kansas, and there's the frontal inversion. And I think maybe we break out of that maybe here. So that's going to be about 3,000 feet deep. Lots of moisture above that. Looks like there's been lots of lift working on that part of the column right in this area here. So very cloudy day. And above that, uh, not much dry air. And also still looks like a unidirectional kind of pattern there. A little bit of a sharp turning, though, in the lowest 5,000 feet. But the you're not going to get tornadic storms out of that because there's so much cold air. And that brings us to the satellite. Let's uh, look that over. run that back earlier today and this is a visible imagery we're looking at here so we see all this this is all the uh, tropical moisture coming north and a little bit of overrunning in that area and then back out here we've got the upper level low so upper level low right there looks like one little lobe of lift extending south from that and also we can kind of trace the front. You look north of there and there's lots of low overcast all the way from Chicago back to Denver. And south of that, the air looks pretty tropical. It looks like what we've been seeing over the past six months. We'll zoom in on that and uh, start out with the northwestern U.S. And let's see what we're looking at here. All right, first glance, what I'm seeing on this is a lot of, I think, convective debris in Nevada here, all the way up to Idaho. Looks like more of that up in the uh, bitter, bitter root range. And yeah, let's run that forward and see what happens. Yeah, this uh, cloud activity up in Montana has the look of unstable air probably a lot of cold air vection in that area and I think kind of a similar pattern there in Nevada it looks like cold air coming south maybe modifying picking up moisture or picking up heat and destabilizing in the very lower levels there so we get clouds developing there low strata cumulus and alto cumulus and Looks like we got a new system coming into Washington and Oregon. The southwestern U.S. sector gives us a better look at that cutoff low. Actually, that's not a cutoff low. That's actually a... Let me go back and show that to you real quick. Let 
There we go. Um, actually, if we go down to 500, we can pick up a little bit of closure on that low right there. However, that is uh, north of the polar front jet, so we're not going to call that a cutoff low. That's something we would find out in this area here. So this is more of a occlusion. This is an old Barra Clinic system that has uh, occluded and uh, also a lot of cold air wrapping into that and that gives us those height falls in that area. So that's what we're seeing there on the uh, satellite and I'll bring that up here and we'll take a look at that. And especially if we animate that you can see the rotation. There it is right there. It looks like a center down around the Bryce Canyon area. Get that centered. Okay, and then further out to the west as we get the heating going on during the day, I think that helps the front take definition. That looks like the uh, Pacific front right there. And we run that a little bit further forward. And that's about all the de detail I can really see. It looks like there's some instability back in the uh, tropical sector, but I uh, can't see much going on in the low levels there. Okay, the northern plains big cloud shield due to all the cold air coming southward in the low levels. So the flow is doing something like that there in the low levels and there's probably a bit of overrunning coming up from the south over the top of that air mass. Definitely in the upper levels we can see some streaks of cirrus going like that and that's the jet stream winds far above the front-on version. That's just that's cloud material that would be there either way, even if the cold air wasn't coming south. Then in Texas, yep, kind of a stormy pattern. You can see the storms breaking out there around Clovis and up to Dimmit. We catch that one tornadic storm right there. However, that moves very quickly to the northeast. And these storms get themselves over the top of this cold air and they start dissipating as they get into that cool air mass. So if you're actually chasing, you would kind of head down and kind of stay probably south of I-40 in this kind of situation. And I've got some close-up shots we can take a look at. We'll bring that up here. Yeah, there we go. So this is a uh, zoom on Texas there. And you'll be able to see the storms coming together right there around Clovis. This is around uh, 1 o'clock. And there's the first towers going up right there. And there they go, about 15 minutes later. And they've got uh, kind of a very strongly sheared look. And there's one good cell right there, probably kind of photogenic back there in New Mexico. And we can see the uh, cells moving quickly up into the uh, Dalhart and Perryton area. And yeah, towards the very end, looks like some overshoots coming up in the Lawton, Anadarko, and Oklahoma City area. And then just a quick look down at Texas. Uh, there's been some instability down in the Dallas, Waco, Lufkin, Austin area, and that's because the air mass is very uncapped. And you can see the anvils kind of shearing off towards the east there. Kind of, a, kind of an unusual pattern. Let me just animate that real quick. And you can see those numerous cells across East Texas there with the actual updrafts moving swiftly to the north. Okay. Heading up to the uh, northeast U.S. It's uh, dark there right now, but earlier, yeah, we can pick out the frontal boundary. Looks like that runs from just north of St uh, State College, south of Cleveland, back uh, to just north of Indianapolis and just north of St. Louis there. So that's the uh, strong polar front in that area. And then down in the southeast U.S., they're under the influence of that tropical moisture. You can see in Florida there, easterly flow still predominating in that region. So it looks like maybe one little, I don't know if that's an easterly wave or the sea breeze. I'm going to say that's I don't know, this has kind of the look of an easterly wave right there, but I can see the uh, sea breeze getting active in the Tampa area. And a few cells pop up as it moves into the Tampa and Ocala area. 
Other than that, uh, it's mostly under high pressure in that region this, this evening. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at the uh, hemispheric uh, situation. This will be kind of the lead into the changes coming up over the next week or two. And let me find my, yeah, there we go. Checking on chat here and see what's going on. Let me move, move the microphone here a little bit. Okay. Uh, Sue M reporting 81 in Indiana. Yeah, that cold front just north of there. Uh, 78 in Lafayette, Indiana. David Lumbert reporting 85 over 73 in Arkansas. However, Fred Reamer up there in Grand Forks, 41 over 36. Got uh, Mark here, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I want to say there's a, a Navy base there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 74 degrees and down to 59 at this time. Burl H, 50s in Iowa, getting some of that overrunning. Erica Baker in Coffeyville, Kansas, 73 over 71, tornado warning, southwest of Ponca City. Got JT here reporting 54 and 100% humidity. Adam Davis, 89 degrees there in Indianapolis. Ryan Toomey's there in Florida joining us. All eyes on the Gulf of Mexico this evening. Yeah, we'll, we'll be taking a look at that hurricane on uh, Tuesday, on Tuesday's webcast. So you'll want to tune in for that. Carl Burkhoff is here and uh, Mike Estwick, 44. Light rain in Denver. Got Sam Hooker there, 54 in Federal Way, Washington. Freeze watches in Colorado. And Fred Reamer in North Dakota looking for snow possible tonight. Uh, Pat uh, Nikki reporting big gusts and rain in the Arizona-Mexico border area. Um, yeah, I'll try to take a look at Arizona there. We, it's kind of difficult for me to do spot forecast because of the pace that we work through on this weather cast. But if I hit uh, Arizona there on the uh, chart sequence, we'll try to take a look at that there. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's uh, head into that forecast. So this is uh, the hemispheric chart. You can see it's uh, we've got kind of a window on. North America, and this kind of gives us the master solution for weather over the next uh, week or so. So let me get my windows going. Okay. So starting out, uh, we've got uh, that big trough out over Arizona and Utah. So this would be the chart here for right now. Looks like uh, that's centered around uh, Winslow and Flagstaff. And yeah, Jet Max rotating around the south part of that trough. And let's see what's going to happen over the next few days. For, yeah, the trough hangs around the Four Corners area. However, you can see most of the energy shifts to the forward side of that trough. The trough is located right here. And you can see this uh, colorization showing the stronger flow and uh, some of the higher vorticity that's centered mostly on the forward side of that trough so that should help it uh, kind of lift out northeast like that however there's this new jet max coming down the back side so we should get another round of uh, deepening of that trough and here comes a hurricane coming out into the gulf and that'll be kind of moving swiftly north into uh, florida there So going into Tuesday and Wednesday, GFS forecasting that hurricane to make landfall, going a little bit west of the NHC guidance into the, uh, into the what's the name of that city? Um, good grief. Yeah, it's kind of dropped my mind. Way out there in the uh, western Florida panhandle there. And uh, right in this area here in Arizona, you can see what looks like a wave kind of lifting out. So this will be the next shot of energy moving out into Texas on Wednesday. So there it is Wednesday morning. And then by afternoon, 
coming into the uh, Dallas and Florida or Fort Smith area. So it looks like uh, that may have a shot of uh, producing thunderstorms maybe in this area here on Wednesday. And then we have this next bit of energy. This is round three coming in through California. And let's follow that. We can see that rotating around the base of the trough. There it is right there. It looks like there's another shot, number four coming in right there. And there's Sergio starting to show up. So everybody's uh, joining the party here. So that next uh, wave really deepens there across the Mojave Desert. Sergio's remains uh, kind of fall into that uh, base of the trough right there. So it looks kind of wet there for Arizona and New Mexico. So yeah, that's what you're going to be seeing there along the... I'm assuming you're around uh, Douglas or Nogales. Uh, let me check that viewer name. That's one of our new uh, viewers there, Padaniki. Okay, so I'm assuming you're kind of in that area there. So, yeah, you're going to have the remains of uh, Sergio. Looks like maybe around Friday. And then this next system coming in on uh, Saturday there. So, yeah, it's possible you might get some... Uh, it's probably a little bit early for snow in the higher elevations, but uh, certainly some cold rain is possible. Okay, so the whole system will be uh, lifting out around the weekend. This is uh, going to be Saturday night right there. So it looks like uh, maybe kind of wet there in West Texas. The flow looks like it's getting a little bit more meridional. Wow, I actually was able to pronounce that word there. Okay, so yeah, it's getting more and more mer meridional. So. Things will probably get, be getting more active here going into next week. This is kind of rooting out some of that cold air that's up in the Arctic and maybe bringing that south. Meanwhile, the other side of that is uh, the amplification down to the southern latitudes may pick up some moisture, getting that Pineapple Express going. So we're going to watch for that around Monday or Tuesday, maybe affecting the west coast there. It gets very troughy out there in the Gulf of Alaska and northern uh, Pacific uh, next week. Now this is a cutoff flow right there around Arizona because that's south of the uh, polar front jet. And there's another cutoff flow right there. So these will be kind of wandering loosely with the prevailing westerlies right there. So yeah, that does look uh, kind of wet there for the southwestern U.S. Here comes some energy coming towards the uh, west coast there for Tuesday. A couple jet maxes coming around the base of that trough so that should dig that trough on in and here comes this next one for the 20th so I guess all I can say is we've got kind of an active uh, couple weeks coming up here lots of troughing there and uh, as we get to the very end of the pattern very strong northwesterly flow. So it looks uh, cold, at least for the eastern U.S., towards the middle and end of October. And just to give you an illustration about how the patterns are going to change, let me show you the uh, precipitable water chart. <clears throat> so at the very top there, you're going to see the uh, time there, the time and the date. So this is uh, Monday at 0Z. That's going to be about right now. And you can see that uh, this purple and blue, this is all moisture throughout much of the troposphere. So this is all lots of tropical air sitting across the Mississippi River Valley, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. And I'm going to run this through it quickly, and you can see the changes that will be going on. So you can see we're bringing up moisture. Here comes that hurricane showing up there in Florida. However, there's this uh, west to east change where we have dry air sweeping through the Great Plains. Hurricane moves up into Georgia and in its wake, we've got uh, cool dry air spilling into much of the uh, central U.S. And look at that push the moisture out. So that's sweeping the moisture away and in its wake, big uh, polar high coming into the Dakotas air. And you can see we get some moisture trying to come back up, a little bit of return moisture for Friday. And there's the, that other hurricane remnants right there. I think that's Sergio coming up in Arizona for Saturday. However, look at that. It gets displaced by another outbreak of cold air about a week from now. 
So that pushes that out into the Gulf. All the tropical air gets displaced down into the southern Gulf of Mexico. We get a couple of uh, return moisture phases right there, but overall, it looks like the cold air is winning the battle. And going into the 20th and 21st, much, much different pattern there. So, yeah, see that right there towards the end? That's a little Alberta clipper coming southeast there. Let's follow that. Very fast moving there. Probably some showers likely for the Midwest. But overall, we're just going to be under the influence of all this dry air coming southward. And that should uh, change our pattern here during the next uh, 10 days or so. Okay, yeah, let's see here. Uh, direct weather. I appreciate uh, your comments about the books. Uh, let me just put up that link there. Um, if you don't want to send a Patreon donation, you're welcome to, um, well, there's the Patreon donation there, but you can also go to weathergraphics.com. I need to get a slide for that, but uh, weathergraphics.com, that's got my forecasting books and uh, software, and one of them I'm, is the one I'm using right here, Digital Atmosphere. So that's making these maps here. So very helpful there. So yeah, feel free to look at that, weathergraphics.com. And Padaniki talking a little bit about wind and rain there, wind gust. Okay, very good. Glad that helped you. Uh, Ryan Toomey's another rain event for the Carolinas. Yeah, I got that. It's going to be wet for much of the southern U.S. there. Summer is over, gang. And Carl Burkhoff mentioning pivotalweather.com. All right, very good. All right, well, that'll probably do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the webcast. And uh, we'll be back on Tuesday, 7 p.m. again, and we'll take a look at that hurricane coming up into Florida. So those of you who joined us and missed the information about that hurricane, I'll just put that up quickly. And uh, here it is. It's Michael. Tropical storm right now, but we're expecting uh, strengthening probably to a, a Cat 1 maybe cat to a storm there and there's that track right there okay well have a good evening and uh, we'll see you tuesday bye-bye